Hello there and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, if you're like me and you're a massive Lego and Star Wars fan, chances are you've seen the new Bad Batch trailer for the final season, season three, coming out later this year. Honestly, I cannot wait. We're also getting a triple episode premiere, which looks amazing. So today I've decided we're building not one, not two, not three, not four, but five Bad Batch mocks, all exclusively based around the trailer. So... Instead of doing any theories like I used to do a few years back, I've decided that I'm going to recreate the scenes best I can. There are five difficulties here of mock builds, starting off with a sort of young limb build, which is just going to be using official Lego pieces. Then we're going to create a custom character. Then we're going to use our custom characters in a build, make a micro scale model and then a sort of mini scale model based on all images from the show. The trailer does look amazing and if you do want to check it out and didn't know that there was a trailer I'll leave the official one linked down in the description below as well as my fiance's breakdown and reaction to the trailer so be sure to check out both of them in the description and I guess let's start off with the first build. And as you can see for the Young Lin build for today's video I'm taking the Dark Trooper Attack Diorama, which I made using two of the playsets, Dark Trooper Attack, which is now a retired set, but if you do have any, you can just use this wall here from either the diorama or the playset. We've got to remove a few of these Dark Troopers. In fact, let's remove all the minifigures, including Luke, from this diorama, because this is the wall that we specifically want to use to replicate this scene from the trailer and to create our Rex without having to buy the UCS Venator which currently is the only set you can pick up a new Captain Rex. We're going to use the officer here from the 501st Battlefront 2 Battle Pack, remove his helmet and as Rex doesn't have any weapons in the scene also take his gun away and just stand him in front of that back wall there and as you can see once I get the right angle and try not to get too much glare we can zoom in and it looks close enough to that Rex. Now, this is only the Young Lin build. This is the easiest one from the video. I just wanted to create something that you could also create at home, as long as you've got this battle pack and the Dark Trooper Attack playset, which, to be fair, they're both quite cheap builds, and still not everyone will have the both of them, especially if you're only just getting into LEGO and Star Wars, but still, they're quite easy pieces to get, and if you don't have this back wall here, you can use most walls from any Star Wars playset because there tends to be a lot of grey bricks and even just pile one up yourself, especially if you've turned one of the bigger vehicles into one of my more minifigure scout marks. You'll definitely have a load of grey pieces left over, but that brings us on to the first custom minifigure of the video. And of course, if you didn't know already, there will be spoilers for the trailer in this video, as I will be creating characters and scenes that do pop up throughout the trailer. And of course, right at the end, we got a lovely surprise with a Sarge Ventress appearing for the first time since the Clone Wars. Well, at least on screen, there is a novel, Dark Disciple, which is a really good book. And I've seen a lot of people saying that they are now retconning this novel and... As Lucas said, any of the books in that are true as long as they don't interfere with the screen. That was the case for a lot of the prequel books. And if you go back and read a load of the books from the original trilogy prequels, so many of them have been technically retconned. However, I don't think it's anything to panic about. Honestly, if you have read that book, pretty much most of it will still stand, dependent how they work a character in Bad Batch. But based on the design, it seems to be heavily inspired by that book. So that is what we're going to be building today. And to do that, I think the closest thing to her outfit, at least how it looks on the cover, is Ki Adi Mundi's costume or his Jedi robes that he wears in the prequels and also in the Clone Wars when he shows up. But the arms don't really represent Asajj's too well. And in fact, Asajj's arms actually have quite a bit of detail on. So we are going to... Pop off Kieri Mundi's arms and of course we're not going to be using that headpiece either as we do have a Clone Wars Asajj here which whilst many people feel different ways about the Clone Wars designs I think for the aliens such as Asajj it does sort of work it's more just the humanoids that most people have a problem with. Now we are going to want some brown arms I did pick up Chewie for the brown arms but I have just realised this old version of Han does have them same 
brown arm. So we might as well use the three figures to create this custom. And we're going to take the arms off and also the hair piece, but we're going to save that for a little later and just make sure we are taking off Han's hands as well. That could be a tongue twister if you say it quick enough, because of course we do want Asajj's white hands as you can see in the trailer and just generally whenever she's not wearing gloves, I guess it makes sense that her hands match the rest of her skin tone. And now we've got the outfit. One last thing to do is to get Asajj's head, pop it on the minifigure. And of course she has a bit of hair, which is why we've saved this Han hair piece. We're just going to pop that on top. And as you can see, we have a Dark Disciple, Asajj Ventress. Lego don't actually make a yellow lightsaber in any sort of translucent element. There could have been a yellow bar, however... I've actually gone with the glow in the dark lightsaber piece here, which in a minute I will be turning off my blinding lights to give you a look at what this saber actually looks like. And as you can see, now that I've turned the light off, it's glowing a little greeny color, but I think that the green is probably the closest to yellow we can get without Lego making an official piece. So let me turn the lights back on. And now that we've got our second mock created, we could have built a background for this character, but it is just a dark black scene. So I think we'll keep it at the custom minifigure. I mean, what we can even do is give Asajj one of these black CMF base plates, and that just adds a little bit more to the scene and sort of finishes off the custom minifigure. So, so far, we've got our Rex, we've got our Asajj, Let's get into the, uh, I guess, proper scenes and recreations from the trailer. And just before I go on to the next one, you can see side by side Asajj with the trailer version of herself, which I guess is not the most accurate thing. Lego for sure would not push out a minifigure that is this alike, but it's sort of the best we can do right now, at least with the parts I have to hand and just looking at all my other Star Wars minifigures. So let's get on to the next build. And it is here that we are getting a bit more complicated. You might already know the scene I'm trying to create. This red guard sort of gives it away. This scene here on screen where the Emperor's marching through all the different clones. And as far as I'm concerned, we have nothing anywhere near a commando clone in LEGO. So instead, I've gone with the next best option, which is these Phase 1 clones, because they have the same sort of visor marking and whilst it doesn't glow i guess you can definitely add it in some post filming effects and of course we're missing a few characters from this scene so to start it up what i've done with the emperor's royal red guards is simply just remove their cape their capes do look cool from a lego point of view and especially when playing with them characters are always fun up with capes but they are a bit too big get in the way of the scene and especially in the bad batch style of animation the robes just flow over the figures i guess the arms are covered but the hands still pop up so we could have even switched the arms to a nice red color but instead i'm just removing the cape and behind them you might have already seen the chi slopes the one by two just shows that they are wearing robes it is dragging along the floor and We've got the same for the Emperor here, where we can use the brand new Emperor. Now, he will be in a magazine come February for us here in the UK. If you're in mainland Europe, then chances are you can already pick him up in the LEGO Star Wars magazine. And for anyone anywhere else in the world, then definitely keep your eye out on Bricklink and Brick Owl or wherever you buy your LEGO minifigures, because you should see quite a nice drop in price for the brand new Emperor Palpatine minifigure. Now, we don't want his cloak, same reason as the guards, but I think Palpatine might look a bit too skinny without any sort of robe. So what we're actually going to be doing is taking the plain black Mandalorian cape, which I think came in the Mandalorian battle pack. We haven't really seen it too much, only with the Mandalorians. And we're actually going to give him that because it's a lot sleeker than the typical minifigure cape, but still just builds out his figure around them arms and perhaps if there was a red version for the royal guards we could even have given him that and we just want to make sure when we place him down that his cape sort of lips up on the cheese slope so you can actually see it rolling out down the back a little bit better and also gives us 
a bit more of a rounded shape towards the bottom of his cape and to be fair, it looks like he's got one of the new skirt pieces underneath, much like the Kaminoan back there, obviously representing, I think it's Lamasu from the Bad Batch, who is the last remaining Kaminoan. And it's sort of fitting that we get the only Kaminoan minifigure to represent her. Now, for the clones at the back, Palpatine's face really does look menacing. I've just seen it in the camera angle, and that is not a face you'd want to mess with. But for the commandos at the back, they're sort of off-center. You can see the Stormtrooper minifigure is just to the right of Palpatine, and the three of them are actually slightly to the right. But again, I've used the Phase 1 clones for the left and right one. They do have little grey patches at the top of their arms. I tried them with grey arms. They really just don't look right. I think it's just because it blends them into the base plate a bit more. But for this third one... Unlike the other two, it doesn't have that stripe, that grey stripe around the back, which actually is represented well by the fins on these phase ones. You can just picture that in grey and their visor in that nice light blue that glows. But I don't think the Stormtrooper helmet is as accurate as you'd like because obviously it doesn't have that front phase one visor. So the closest thing that we could use to represent it is going to be an inaccurate Lego piece and is actually this Phase 1 pilot helmet. Now, I will explain it a bit because visually it doesn't look like it works, but it really should because the pilots don't actually have these fins in the Star Wars universe. So this helmet should really just be playing with a yellow stripe up the middle and we're going to have to use a bit of our imaginations here, but it does still have that Phase 1 visor at the front and shouldn't have the fin on top. So we will have to ignore it for the sake of this figure. And we've also then got the Doctor, who I cannot remember his name, but the one in the Kaminoan uniform. And I think the best thing to represent it would be Lobot here, which this is actually my second Lobot. I've still got one on display, don't worry. But to be fair, my other Lobot has a face just like this. I'm not quite sure what it is with the Lobot minifigures, but I have got two of these from the old planet sets. And the back of both of their heads look really nice. And the front has just completely worn down. I don't remember exactly customising this too much, but there must have been something. Perhaps I left it in the sun and the print on the front has just completely worn down. But it's odd how clear the corners of this back of the head are. And the face is just nowhere to be seen. I've definitely got to order another one off Bricklink or somewhere in a newer condition at some point. But we will be removing the head as, of course, the Doctor doesn't look anything like Lobot. And actually giving him some dark grey arms to match his trousers as he only has a few light grey elements on his torso. Now, for the other arm, we are going to be adding his glove, which... Originally, I wasn't going to do it until I looked at the reference image just before filming this clip and realised he does actually have a glove on his left hand. And to finish off the minifigure, give him a head and hair. We've got a regular old clone head with the hairpiece from one of the Rogue One pilots that was actually in an advent calendar a few years ago. Again, it's not perfect, but I think it's good enough for the sake of this diorama. This little mock, this whatever you'd want to call it, it is sort of becoming a diorama, but I think the floor's a bit too plain even for my standards. And then to complete the crowd, we have here the brand new Phase 2 Clone Troopers. Of course, I'm using the Firestar arms. Use my link if you are going to order anything on Firestar. Not only does it help the channel, it also gets you 10% off. But you really can use any... White Trooper, Clone, even Snow Trooper. In fact, I have this combination of plates here with just all the different Troopers I have tried it out with. And honestly, they all work just about as well as the rest. Now, if you were to try and go for accuracy, you'd probably want to put your Phase 1 Clone Troopers at the front because there is a row of Commandos before you get to the other sort of early Stormtrooper designs. But... Of course, Stormtroopers, Clones, Snowtroopers, all of them have that rounded helmet, which is visible on the early Stormtrooper design. And I think it does just complete the model. Obviously, the more you have, the better looking this would be. And you can go for the Troopers on both sides. I have got to give this Royal Guard his 
cane here, which all I've done is flipped his hand upside down so that he holds it closer to his chest and isn't pointing it away. But as you can see, this is the finished diorama. It does look a bit plain where we haven't got any of the... I guess sort of background of the rest of Coruscant but I do think it does the job very well and actually does look quite good for what it is it's just a grey base plate with a few minifigures standing on and yes we have customised a few of the minifigures but for the most part the main thing that makes up this scene are all the troopers you add to the side so now we're getting on to the more complex build first off you can see side by side how this compares to the actual scene and now we're going to start off with the next scene. As you can see on screen, it's where the turbo tank is probably escaping some facility. It looks to be blowing up the bridge as it leaves. And though I said we won't be making any theories in this video, I think it's safe to say the Bad Batch are probably on board. You can see my Lego version of this does have some very interesting and unique techniques. First off, we'll start off with the door at the back which I have mimicked based on how we see the door. You've got the stripes in the two blocks at the top, one at the bottom, which is actually covered by a few of the tan tile elements. And if you haven't noticed already, I've actually used the turbo tank from last year's advent calendar. It just felt too good not to use. When I saw that trailer, I knew I had to bring it back and I've just actually dismantled the rest of my advent calendar because I was trying to work on a mock for them and just didn't think there were two good pieces this year to build anything that needed its own video. But I'll definitely be taking a look at that in this year's advent calendar. So stick around to the end of the year. Don't forget to subscribe. We are approaching 700 subs a lot quicker than I expected. Hopefully we can still hit 700 in February as that is my plan for the next month. So be sure you are subscribed. And the turbo tank fits in very well with the scale of this ship. You can see I've used a lot of the minifigure superhero poses and a lot of just the trans orange studs to resemble the rockets that are flying out of the turbo tank. Right at the back there, you can see I've already taken a photo of this set to compare to the original image. And I just want to cover a few more details on the side here with the fences. It's very hard to get them all lined up perfectly, but... You can see I've used the grill tiles on a bracket to get the gaps in that wall and make it as true to the scene as possible. And I actually started constructing this and getting the scale correct before I realised that in the next shot there are actual triangle walls here. They're not just a stick that go up, but they do actually slope out. So I use the snot bricks here with the four studs on the sides, just one by one bricks with the four studs surrounding and added some cheese slopes to get that slope and this bar element, this lightsaber hill, which is the extended one we get in the advent calendar, just has one of them comlink elements on the top to get it into a nice real point. And I've just connected the 1x4 tile with these 1x1 one one clip pieces on the side. It just is a bunch of cool techniques used to give it that awesome look and you can see from that angle and from the side it looks pretty accurate to the content we got in the trailer so this was probably the most fun building just because of i had to get that angle on the side i used different bracket elements not bricks and just had to get something that stuck up above the nice tan platform which is mostly just two by fours but it is a very nice design and again that advent calendar turbo tank fits so nicely with this scene I can't wait to see why it is this turbo tank is seemingly destroying this entrance, probably knocking down a bridge and hopefully meaning that it cannot be followed. But we'll have to wait for the show to come out to find out. And that is on to our last mock of today's video, which is this scene here where Omega is trapped in the cell. And I've actually taken inspiration from the previous scene where it looks like she's being scanned and we don't actually see the two walls of the cell. It looks like quite a roomy cell for Omega. We do have to remember Omega is a bit smaller than the average minifigure. So it seems to at least fit two minifigures wide. And there is, of course, the lovely scene outside. So I have built this 10 by 10 by 10 box here, which is a cube because I don't think this is actually part of the facility on Mount Tantis. 
I think this could actually be in a ship and she's being transported off world, perhaps to Coruscant to have something to do with Palpatine and his whole cloning program that again we do see in the mandalorian but as you can see it is quite a nice size for this cell this door does actually come straight off so we will take a look at that in the minute and i've actually used the nice net piece here to represent the bars nothing really else was thin enough so you can see omegas in her little prison there and as i said on the walls here we could perhaps take a better look from the other side but i have Mimic the design that does pop up in that previous scene. I'll put a side by side on screen now so you can definitely see a few of the different elements used. Of course, we've also got the lights at the bottom and a few other similar pieces just to give it a bit more detail rather than have the plain walls. I've actually rounded it off here with the cheese slopes and this wedge piece on top, which is a bit out of focus, but as you can now see, it just is a bit different to squaring off. Obviously, I had to square off this side. There's no other way I could have put this net on and just makes it a bit different to the other corners. So I really do like it. But as I said, there is that nice view through the front bit, which at the minute is just the edge of my desk. So I have also created this nice backdrop, which does sort of slot in to the gap there. And as you can see, gives Omega that nice view that she would have had from the prison cell, even added a few clouds in there, mostly just the mountains and the water trickling down, which does look really cool. And once again, here is the comparison to the scene, which I've taken it from in the trailer. And I think all of these just turned out really well, especially with the custom minifigures that we created early on and just the use of this net piece, really, I couldn't have made that model without it. So let me know what you thought about any of these mocks down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. And of course, please do subscribe. The support on my videos recently has been absolutely crazy. And honestly, I do appreciate each and every one of you that watch my videos. So stay tuned for more awesome LEGO content. And may the bricks be with you always.